Boom! Shake the room, Fire Nation. JLD here with an audio masterclass on how a local business surged past competitors amid a pandemic. To drop these value bombs, I have brought Charlie Boyce on the mic. He is the president of Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric, a home service provider in Springville, Arizona. They have seen tremendous growth since he acquired the business 10 years ago. And today, Fire Nation, we're talking about how to go from the doer to the manager, how COVID impacted Charlie's business, but how he steered Pascal during the storm. We're going to talk about the CEO's job building the team and what's next on the horizon for this successful business and so much more when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Deliver joy and send messages that pop during the holidays and long after with Clavio, the ultimate marketing platform for e-commerce. With targeted segmentation, email automation, SMS marketing, and more, Clavio helps you create your ideal customer experience. Get your free trial at Clavio.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire. Did you know that 97% of text messages get opened and 90% are opened within three minutes? You need to be texting your customers and Podium can help. For a limited time, sign up for 20% off your plan at podium.com slash fire. Charlie, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. Yeah, how you guys doing? I'd say a little bit of research. I'm sure you could find it out, but um, I went to school here at the University of Arkansas and, and played baseball, and uh, we were able to, you know, win the SEC, which I think was the first time that they had done it, and uh, went to the College World Series, which is a great experience. The Razorbacks. Yes, sir. I'm actually I consider myself a little bit of an aficionado when it comes to college mascots because I'm obsessed with college basketball. So I'm I'm just always loving watching my team, the Providence Friars play all the other basketball teams around and uh, I'm always been a mascot guy because you know we're the Friars it's kind of like ah uh, like the Razorbacks yeah. like that's a great mascot like come on now it is they're starting to get good at basketball again too which is nice that is nice and hopefully we have a good season this year and we'll see so Fire Nation as I mentioned in the intro we're, talk- we're going to talk about how a local business has surged past the competitors amid a pandemic. So let's talk about how you originally got involved with Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric Charlie. Break that down for us. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma originally. I was born and raised. Uh, I'm third generation in the HVAC business. And then, like I said, I, I came to school over here. And uh, whenever I was done, I opened up a HVAC distribution center where I, um, you know, I got to know all of the contractors around here. They were all my customers. And I did that for a number of years. And then Eventually, I came on at Pascal uh, to work under our old owner in sales, and I got here in 2010, uh, sold under him for two years, and then I bought him out in 2012, and then I've been doing it ever since. So one thing that you've done over the years is you've been able to go from a quote-unquote doer to the actual manager, and most business owners struggle with that kind of transition, that kind of move. So first off, kind of break down what you mean by doer, like what you were as this quote-unquote doer, and how did you make that transition into the manager role? For me personally, going from an individual contributor to a manager was not was not too big of a stretch, just for the simple fact that uh, I think I was raised in, in kind of a team environment. So I, I think just putting a good team together kind of... Um, comes somewhat naturally to me, but I think where the bigger challenge for myself was going from a manager to a manager of managers. Um, and that, that definitely is a different skill set. So, uh, over the last couple of years, I've been learning to transition to a manager of managers where I'm just checking in with people and kind of setting more of the strategic direction and make sure we're executing against it. But, uh, we definitely have people here that have struggled a little bit going from the individual contributor role into that manager's role. And it, um, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a challenge for sure. What have been some of those biggest struggles? You know, now it's no longer about you and how well you performed. And, and now it's it's pretty much how well can you get the team to perform. And it goes less about um, that individual skill set that made you successful. And, and how can you teach? How can you coach? How can you help? Are you keeping people accountable? Uh, you know, default is just to get in there and do it yourself. You know, and, and I think we all feel that. It's like, man, I could, I could do this faster, quicker, better, what have you. Uh, and maybe you could. But really, that's that's no longer how you're judged. Now it's it's how well can 
can you get those other people to perform? And, you know, if you can get three, four, five people doing it, uh, you know, they're going to be able to crank out a lot more than what you could. Yeah, I think it's a fascinating topic because I can say a lot of people that listen to this podcast, they're entrepreneurs and a lot of us start off as solopreneurs. It's just us against the world or us doing all the roles. And then we maybe get some traction, have some success. We add on one player, two player, three teammates, you know, we kind of grow our team. And then, you know, there's certain people that just stop there and they're happy with that. And that's actually kind of been our story. We keep our team at about five people and we just stay lean and mean. Uh, but a lot of people grow to 10, to 20, to 40, to 50, to sometimes over 100. And now you're looking at a totally different company where when you were just the solopreneur, but now you're running a company that's maybe 50 people or 100 and you're you know maybe 10 million, 20 million, 30 million dollars in revenue or higher. Like a lot of times the person that started that company is not the right person to be running the company three, five, seven years down the line when it's just a different company now. We're bringing in that kind of revenue with that many employees. So it's something to think about as you evolve and something that we see a lot of times in the corporate world where it's like people seem to get promoted to their level of incompetence, meaning like they're a great salesman, so they get promoted to a manager, but they suck as a manager. And it's like, well, man, they'd be so much more valuable if they were just a salesman because that's what they did great. But you know, you've got to be careful about what that kind of hiring structure looks like. So let's just call a spade a spade, Charlie. COVID has impacted everybody in some way, shape, or form, and it's impacted everybody differently as well. We all have different experiences with it. So how did you specifically steer Pascal during this storm? Home services, we were deemed essential. So, you know, people were spending more time in their homes and people, you know, it's stuff still breaking and apparently they still want it fixed. So uh, we stayed kind of busy throughout, uh, you know, the, the transition. But when it was when it's going on, I think mainly for us is just to get out front and to communicate, you know, whether that be with our employees or, or our customers, just letting our customers know here, here's what we're doing uh, with the personal, you know, the PPE and, and just kind of processes and then our, our internal people kind of same, just letting them know, here's what we're doing. Um, you know, so, so more than anything, I think it was just being a calming voice, um, as we just kind of walk through it together. I mean, that's, that's probably the main thing, I guess. But one thing that you've been able to do is actually surge past some of your competitors during this time. Like, what is it that you've done that's allowed you to not just survive, but in some ways even thrive, even though some of your competition is just falling by the wayside, like what's happening there? You know, a guy said to me um, who, who deals with a lot of contractors across the country, and, and uh, basically I, th- I thought it was a really good statement, but he said, you know, if you if you had your shit together before this, uh, you're doing well. If you didn't, you're probably struggling. And, um, I mean, forgive the language, but I thought it was a, a very well-said statement. Um you know, so so for us, I think we we have a lot of different people and processes in place, and and our people kind of you know they shine through this this transition. But um, you know, whether it be the different type of tech we had in place, you know, Podium being one of them, and a couple other tech platforms that we have, um, they enabled us to kind of move quickly and and adapt kind of on the fly. I think that definitely helped, and and we've seen people. Um, you know, it accelerates change, but but really, I think people are quicker to adopt change in times like these. So, you know, I think our people really helped. And then, you know, the tools we had at our disposal, without question, helped us out. So you heard that, Fire Nation. Have your crap together from day one. Why, why not? Like, why wouldn't you? Because it's going to help you weather these storms. And Interestingly, Charlie, I actually heard you mention Podium there real quick. They're actually a major sponsor of Entrepreneurs on Fire. So why don't you just take just like a minute and like tell us about how Podium has helped you and your business over these times. I think we found them four or five years ago um, as a review uh, generator. I, I heard about them from another contractor. And, and really, that's that's mainly why we brought them on is to kind of help us uh, get reviews from our from our customers. Uh, so it, it started with that. And then, you know, we heard about the chat function that they had that we put on our website. Uh, this was probably, you know, three, four years ago. And, and we did it. And yeah, the rest is kind of history. They've been a great partner for us, but um, you know they, they cranked out podium payments a, a year or two ago, and we've we've pushed a a good amount of dollars through that program, uh, just making it easier to collect from our customers. So, uh, man, there's really not too much stuff that they don't crank out that I'm not in love with. So, <laughs> you know, whether it be the the chat function, um, helping us get reviews, the payments, they're 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 a really really good organization. Yeah, they're great. Like when they came to us, I was like, yes, I love sponsoring companies that I actually love, and they're a perfect example of that. Fire Nation, you'll be hearing from them for the sponsorship, so definitely check them out. And speaking of which, we'll be right back, Fire Nation, when we get back from thanking those sponsors. 
Did you know that 97% of text messages get opened and 90% are opened within three minutes? You need to be texting your customers. If you're spending time on the phone scheduling appointments, are in a tight battle with your competition, or you need to convert more sales from your website, you need Podium. Podium is a business messaging tool that brings all your messages into one centralized inbox your whole team can access, empowering you to save time while responding to your customers faster. Podium is helping all kinds of businesses serve their customers at the highest level, including doctors, mortgage brokers, insurance agents, agents, lawyers, retailers, and more. Whatever your business does, Podium can help. And Podium customers have seen fantastic results. One plumbing company converted 16% of their web traffic into leads, and a national retailer collected over 18,000 reviews across its locations. And for a limited time, you can sign up for 20% off your plan. They're so confident that if Podium doesn't make your business better within 90 days, they will send you a $150 Amazon gift card for Hire Nation. Visit podium.com slash fire to get started. That's 20% off if you visit podium.com slash fire. Ready to stand out in the inbox this holiday season? Get more out of email marketing with Clavio. Every customer is different and Clavio is here to help you build more personal connections with each customer based on the things they really care about. Send more relevant emails by tailoring every experience based on individual preferences and shopping behavior. With top-notch targeting and best-in-class segmentation, you can unlock the full potential of your e-commerce data and create email marketing moments that keep your shoppers coming back well past the holidays. Just ask living proof, Tipsy Elves, Huckberry, or the more than 50,000 other brands growing with Klaviyo. And because Klaviyo is built for e-commerce brands of all shapes and sizes, there's no better marketing platform to help you close out the year strong, deliver joy, and send messages that pop during the holidays and long after. Get started with your free trial at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire. Visit klaviyo.com slash fire today. So Charlie, we're back and I've seen these images of your building and it's, for lack of a better word, incredible. I mean, you have this modern building with concrete, there's metal, there's glass, it's a two-story open area surrounded by offices. You even have this like steel handrail. I mean, it's impressive for literally any company. Like if it was Google or Apple, I'd be like, oh wow, that's really impressive. But you guys are a home service provider and that's kind of rare in the industry. So why did you guys put so much effort into building such a spectacular building? Uh, I appreciate it. But if we're going to be here and spend as much time as we do with each other, I mean, more, more time than we do with our families, let's, let's make it a nice place, you know? Um, and then I, the employees, if they're happy, uh, you know, obviously that's going to come through with, with our customers and make sure that they're in good moods and and that flows through to the customer. So if it's got our name on it, it's going to be, it's going to be nice. It's going to be a touch different. And yeah, if we're going to spend this much time here, we might as well enjoy ourselves. There's so much there, Fire Nation. The two things I kind of want to pick out is, number one, churn will kill a company. I mean, if you have a lot of turnover and you have to rehire and retrain and spend so much time finding new people to fill all these roles, I mean, that will kill a company. So why not make your company and that job a place where people just want to stay because they're happy, because they're being fulfilled, because they love the place. It's beautiful. They're happy coming to work. And how you do one thing, Fire Nation, it's how you do everything. So like when Charlie said, hey, it's going to have our name on it. It's going to be like a representation of us. Like that's what they want through and through 100% from step one to step 100. This is how Pascal rolls. Now, it's the CEO's job to build that team that you've been able to avoid churn for some of the reasons we talked about earlier and for other reasons as well. So how have you specifically crafted your company's culture over these years? coming from a team environment, kind of looking back and figuring out what made those teams successful. We were never, you know, the most talented group. We just were, you know, a band of brothers, for lack of a better term, that, that really just kind of got together and got after it. And similar with what we're doing here at Pascal is just find like-minded individuals and uh, figure out kind of what our culture is, what is our identity, and and find those types of people. Uh, but we, we really look for the intangibles, you know, the, the work ethic, the drive, uh, just kind of that mindset and mentality and then we'll, we'll train for skill. Um, you know, obviously if, if it's HVAC plumbing or electric, we got to have the necessary tradesmen. You've got to be able to actually do the job. Um, but outside of that, you know, a lot of our office staff, a lot of them came from outside of the industry. So really we just try to figure out, you know, who's going to fit in really well and kind of help push this place forward. And then we can always kind of teach, uh, you know, the HVAC plumbing or electrical side. What's maybe something you did wrong or, or a mistake you made at some point while building a team that you're like, you know what, that's a learning lesson. I'm not going to do that again. Share that with us. 
I don't know if we have enough time for that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, I've made plenty of mistakes and, and mainly, um, I would say probably two kind of stand out, obviously to your point earlier, uh, you know, getting the right people that are successful in a certain role and then putting them in a role that they're not quite prepared for. Uh, then they kind of get out there and they're swimming in the deep mm. end or, or maybe it's just a, above their capabilities. Um, you know, and there's been instances where as a result, we've had to move on from that person. And, and obviously you feel like you let that person down because they were doing well in their individual contributor role. They just weren't equipped to handle another role. Real quick to jump in. Can you ever shift them back or is that just tough to do? A couple times I have and a couple times I haven't. And, and I'm super proud of the times that we've been able to pull them back. Um, you know, and then unfortunately there's been a couple times where we haven't and there's just too much water under the bridge or... And it kind of feels like a demotion. It can feel that way. Yeah. And that just happened, you know, within the last year or something. Mm. I, I had a great person here and, and really just kind of put them in a position that they didn't belong. And uh, yeah, that one was on, on me. But at the end of the day, you just got to keep moving. Got it. Thanks for sharing those. Super critical. I would love to finish strong by asking you, what's on the horizon for Pascal? I mean, we're obviously still in the midst of this pandemic. Things aren't changing in that area anytime soon. I mean, we have a lot of hope on the horizon, but you know, we're still living and working amongst this. So what are you foreseeing in the near term future? What are you seeing just peeking over that horizon? You know, for us personally, um, like we said, it's it's kind of business as usual in regards to stuff still breaking and people still wanting stuff fixed. So um, we got to kind of adapt on the fly with how we're handling customers, but we're going to continue to just grow organically as we have. And we've done a couple small acquisitions earlier this year. We just you know entered into Southwest Missouri market. So we're going to just con- keep on doing it and continue to grow organically and, and start looking at uh, some acquisitions. Charlie, my audience, Fire Nation, they are solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, business owners, small business owners, brick and mortar. I mean, we've really got the big mix in here. What's something that you really want them to walk away with, with everything that we've talked about here today? What's one takeaway for our listeners? I mean, if it's just me personally and what's kind of helped me personally, and I, I think just by listening to your podcast, they're probably already doing it. Uh, but just to keep grow, keep learning, you know, I, I try to lead or read a ton of books and podcasts. And if I step back and people ask, you know, how, you know, what's kind of been the biggest contributor to overall success, it would just probably be uh, the ability to keep growing, keep learning, keep listening. Um, So, you know, if they're listening to the podcast, I'd say they're probably on the right track. And it comes in handy because Fire Nation pre-interview, I was like, Charlie, you are way, way, way too far away from that microphone, brother. I want you eating that microphone. He was able to grab some business books he had laying around, stack them up, stack his microphone on top, and now his audio sounds amazing. So multi-use for sure. And how can Fire Nation connect with you or find out more of what you have going on, Charlie? And then we'll say goodbye. Yeah, so we're on the usual platforms, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, what have you. But also, uh, you always got my email, and that's C-B-O-Y-C-E at gopascal.com. So you can always catch me on my email. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with CB and JLD today, so let's keep up that heat the rest of the day. And head over to eofire.com. Just type Charlie in the search bar. That's Charlie with a Y. And his show notes page will pop right up with everything we talked about here today. Take him up on that. Shoot him an email. Let him know you appreciate his time he took out of his day to share his value bombs with you. And Charlie, I just want to say thank you for sharing your truth, your knowledge, your value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we will catch you on the flip side. Sounds good, John. Appreciate it, man. Hey, Fire Nation, today's value bomb content was brought to you by Charlie. And one thing that I've identified over the years, successful entrepreneurs, they are productive. They're disciplined and oh my God, are they focused. That's why I created the Mastery Journal. It is a gorgeous faux leather journal that will ensure that you master those three things, productivity, discipline, and focus in just 100 days. It is my best work ever, Fire Nation. So visit themasteryjournal.com. Use promo code podcast for a $15 discount as a thank you for listening to this very podcast. And I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Deliver joy and send messages that pop during the holidays and long after with Clevio, the ultimate marketing platform for e-commerce. With targeted segmentation, email automation, SMS marketing, and more, Clavio helps you create your ideal customer experience. Get your free trial at Clavio.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire. 
Did you know that 97% of text messages get opened and 90% are opened within three minutes? You need to be texting your customers and Podium can help. For a limited time, sign up for 20% off your plan at podium.com slash fire.